Hello everyone. It is my pleasure to present at this year's OHBM. I declare that I have no disclosures. Today I'm going to present you my recent work titled Operating Connector Biomarker for Sleep Hairs. I am currently a postdoc researcher at Sleep and Neuroimage Center at Southwest University. My name is Yulin Wang. If you want to know more details about this work, you can check our preprint with this link here. As a start, I would like to introduce you the rule setting model of sleep hairs. Sleep hairs has been defined as a multi-dimensional pattern of sleep wakefulness adapted to individual social and environmental demands that promotes physical and mental well-being. Sleep hairs mainly consist of six domains of sleep and circadian functioning. These are regularity in sleep, satisfaction with sleep or sleep quality, alertness during waking hours, timing of sleep, sleep efficiency or continuity, sleep duration, sleep quality, insomnia symptoms, sleep medication use. Uh, since 2014, Daniel Buse pointed out the importance and the necessity of sleep hairs. Later on, Grandner and his colleague called for the research direction of neuroscience of sleep hairs and implied that sleep hairs is a composite component. Later on, in 2022, the research group of Kai and many other researchers investigated the associations between sleep hairs and amygdala reactivity to negative facial expressions in UK by one cohort. So taking together, sleep hairs is both conceptually and operationally a composite concept containing multiple domains of sleep. In line with this, high dependence and interaction across different domains of sleep hairs encourages a transition in sleep hairs research from category to a dimension approaches that can integrate neuroscience and sleep hairs. To cover the research gap, the present study answers four research questions. Here is a more detailed flowchart of the present study. So, we ask the first question, can we identify a composite sleep hairs dimension that relates to resting state functional connectivity patterns? In order to answer this question, we used partial linear square analysis, which I will elaborate more on the later slides to seek the multivariate covariance between the resting state functional connectivity and the behavior mirrors across multiple sleep hairs domains. We want to identify the connecting signatures for latent dimensions of sleep hairs. Then we're further wondering whether the obtained dimension can be replicated and generalized to unseen independent data sets. So we replicated the PRS model with a replication data set and we further tested the cross data set generalizability. Uh, we then asked what is the neuromolecular relevance of the brain connectin online indi individual difference in sleep phenotype. So we calculated the spatial association between the sleep hair related connector and the neural transmitter densities. Finally, does the sleep hairs related brain connector have predictive utility in both hairs population and insomnia disorders? So we used uh, machine learning methods like the predictive modeling and the classification modeling uh, for the answer of this question. Both the discovery dataset and the replication dataset were from the behavior brain research project to Chinese personality. The BBP was launched in September 2019 to recruit participants from that year's freshman at Southwest University. All the participants, uh, we have collected their sleep hairs mirrors across multiple domains and also they received the resting state MRI scanning. As mentioned earlier, we used the partial list square to seek the multi-covariance between the sleep hairs domain and the, the resting state function connectivity. 
as a multivariate data-driving statistic technique. PAS is capable of discovering the latent dimensions that link inter-individual variability in intrinsic functional organization to inter-individual variability in behaviors marrying spanning multiple domains of state pairs. So, what are the state pairs measures in the present study? We have included seven domains of sleep hairs uh, related measures. The first domain is satisfaction with sleep or sleep quality. The second is alertness during waking hours. The third is timing of sleep. The fourth is sleep efficiency or continuity. The fifth is sleep duration. The sixth is sleep deficiency. And the seventh is sleep beliefs, attitudes, and habits. Then I'm going to present the main results. So the PRS analysis reveals one robust dimension linking sleep years and resting state functional connectivity. So as indicated in this figure, we can notice that only the first Latin variable survived after permutation testing with FDR correction. So this survived dimension accounted for 28.6 percentage uh, resting state function connectivity and behavior covariance. And the significant 27 strongest correlations between participants' behavior measures and their behavior competence scores were presented in Figure C. As we can notice that the most contributing measure in the latent variable found in the discovery sample was the total score of the PSQI. And the figure D denotes the unthreshold correlation between participants' resting state functional connectivity data and their uh, resting state functional connectivity composite scores. And figure E denoted the threshold correlations between participants' resting state functional connectivity data and their resting state functional connectivity component scores. And the figure F plotted the correlations between participants' resting state functional connectivity data and their fun resting state functional connectivity composite scores averaged within and between networks defined by year 7 network. We zoomed in the previous figure F so, so that we can have a clear idea of the significant resting state functional connectivity pattern. So greater IS functional connectivity composite score was associated with increased resting state functional connectivity within subcortical network, mainly thalamus, uh, and increased resting state functional connectivity between the DMN and the dorsal tension network, between the DMN and the ventral tension network, between the frontal parent network, for FPN and the DAN between the FPN and the VAN. While greater resting state functional connectivity composite score was associated with decreased resting state functional connectivity within the smart motor network and the VAN, uh, and between the DAN and the VAN, between the DAN and SMN, between the subcortical network and the DMN, between the subcortical network and the FPN. So this figure further demonstrated the relative importance of the regions in the obtained significant resting state functional connectivity pattern by showing the top five nodes with highest weighted degree in both the positive and negative networks. Specifically, for the positive network, the top five nodes with the greatest number of edges were primarily located with the ventral tension network such as the dorsal insular cortex and the precentral joints, while for the negative network, the top five nodes with the greatest number of edges were primarily located in the subcortical regions, such as the thalamus and the smart motor cortex. So we also did a confirmatory analysis using a different assessments uh, atlas. 
Basically, the PRS results remained largely unchanged when using a different salesman's outlaws containing 300 regions, as you can see uh, from this figure here, and also this figure here, um, showing that the robustness of the ro obtained uh, Latin variable was further ensured by using a different salesman's outlaws. We then tested the course dataset rapidly ability and generalizability with a replication dataset. As indicated from this figure here, uh, as an internal validation of the obtained Latin variable or dimension in the discovery dataset, we first replicated the PRS analysis with the replication dataset. So with the replication dataset, again, only the first Latin variable remains significant. Uh, we further tested the cross dataset generalizability by projecting the dataset tool onto the silence parameters learned by the PRS analysis in dataset 1. Then we examined the correlation uh, between the behavior and the resting state function connectivity composite scores in dataset 2. Furthermore, we uh, answered question 3 by testing whether the state pairs related connectome was spatially correlated with the distribution of several neurotransmitter systems involved in the domains of sleep hairs, so including serotonin receptors and transporters together with the metatropical glutamate receptor 5 and the gamma aminoburic acid type A receptor. Uh, I wouldn't go too much details uh, for the calculations given the limitation of time. So the positive network and the negative resting state function connectivity loadings were summed separately for each region of the brain connector atlas to represent the region input and score in the positive and negative network here. Basically, we found spatial correlation with neurotransmitter densities. So the resting state function and connectivity loadings were spatially correlated with the distribution of several neurotransmitter systems potentially involved in domains of sleep hairs. Specifically, the density value of secretonin receptors such as 5-HT1A, 5-HT2A, and also the GABA and also the glutamate receptors were found to be significantly correlated with the summed positive network. While the density value of 5-HT1A and also glutamate receptor were found to be also significantly correlated with the summed negative network. We further tested the predictive utility of the sleep hairs related connector, first of all, sleep quality in the hair scene population. Mm, considering that the most contributing measure in the Latin variable found in the discovery and replication BPP sample was the PSQI total score, we further examined the predictive utility of this sleep hairs related connector features for individual PSQI scores in a completely independent dataset. So, as indicated in this figure here, basically we have found that the the uh, sleep hairs related uh, connector can have a predictive utility of the PSQI total score for the unrelated individuals in the human connector project. Furthermore, we also tested the predictive utility of the sleep hairs related connector for sleep disorders, that is, insomnia disorder. So basically, we use the classific classification models, and we have achieved average accuracy of almost 80 percentage uh, for the sleep hairs related connector uh, to differentiate the sleep hairs individuals and the insomnia disorders. So taking together this study is a step forward in measuring and quantifying sleep hairs composite by incorporating whole brain resting state functional connectivity. Then future studies can incorporate more sleep-related variables, such as sleep regularity, to depict the sleep hairs dim dimensions. Future research could also incorporate much uh, 
multi model image data, objective sleep measurements with articograph and polysomed graph, biochemicals, and the genomics. Third, the sample mainly consisted in young adults in pattern recognition and middle aged adults in the prediction and the class classification models. Leaving the resting state function connectivity guided sleep pairs dimension in other age groups such as children, adolescents, and elderly unknown. Um, so we were wondering whether uh, the derived sleep pairs related connector has high potential for clinic translation and ultimately for the diagnosis, prognosis, treatment, and the prevention of the sleep pairs related problems. So this could be a future research direction. I would like to thank all the core authors or collaborators and also the lab members in the Sleep and Neuroimaging Center and also the funding for the support of this uh, research work. Thank you so much for your attention and if you have any questions, you can just send me an email. Bye bye.